Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taya and this is Taya's Turning Pages. As you can see, I'm back with another Rex video, and this video is going to cover toxic female friendships. Now, this is a very interesting and polarizing trope that I've noticed that authors will include in their books. I know it's not for everybody, but I love a good toxic female friendship book. Now, does that mean that I want that in my real life or that I have friends like that in my real life? No, but of course, tropes like these do make the story more entertaining and more gripping for you as the reader. So that's why I wanted to make this video today to just share some of my favorite books fall into this trope. Now I do have a few things working against me when it comes to this video. I don't have my extra camera battery nor charger nor do I have the proper SD card so I'm going to have to kind of speed through this video. I don't have any other time to film this so yeah but with all of that out of the way let's jump right in. first book that I wanted to share with you is The Ivies by Alexa Don or Donnie. I'm so sorry for mispronouncing their last name but I will say that Alexa is an author as well as a booktuber so I will leave their channel linked down below just in case you want to check out their channel but I really loved this book. This was such a fun YA murder mystery. The story is set at a very wealthy and elite boarding school and it follows five friends known as the Ivies and the reason why they're known as the Ivies is because they are of course trying their hardest to get into the best Ivy League schools. So think Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Columbia, etc. So like I said, these girls are trying their hardest to get into these schools. And so they're taking up all of the extracurriculars. They're making sure that they volunteer. They're making sure that they get the best grades and they are willing to do anything to get into their dream Ivy League school. And that includes murder. The story does start to spiral out of control because the girls are thrusted into this police investigation because there is a murder that takes place on campus and the Ivies are very suspicious of one another. But like I was saying, this is actually one of my favorite YA thrillers that I've read because I read this during the height of the college admission scandal. If you remember that that was like all over the news. I think Alexa did a really great job at exploring toxic friendships within this group also just shining a light on how ugly the college admissions process can get for students. I remember when I was applying for colleges and just how competitive it was back then. I can only imagine just how intense and nerve-wracking it must be for students now. So I just felt like this book not only hit the nail on the head with exploring again toxic female friendships and just how far these girls were willing to go and hurt each other in order to get into their desired or dream school but also shining a light on just how messed up the college admissions process is specifically as it relates to the Ivy League schools. I will just say that I feel like one of the reveals or one of the twists in the story was very predictable. Overall I still recommend the story and I still thought that the plot was solid and it was so entertaining to see how these girls would connive and kind of you know snake each other out and snake out other students in order to really get the top ranks in their class. We're going to keep it rolling with the YA Rex. So the next book that I have here that falls into this category is Dare Me by Megan Abbott. So this book is a bit of a wild card and to be honest I have not read this book yet but as you can possibly see on the cover here this was actually a TV adaptation on the channel USA and then Netflix actually picked it up. But then they canceled it after one season. So this is no longer an active TV show but the material in this book was used to help guide that TV show. So that's why I wanted to share this book. Even though I haven't read this I was obsessed with the first and only season that we got of this show. So this story actually follows the highly competitive world of cheerleading and it specifically follows a cheerleading team. But it specifically follows two characters that are on the team named Addie and Beth. And Addie and Beth have been best friends ever since they were children. They've pretty much been inseparable ever since they were children and they both ended up on the same cheer squad. But the girls get news that they're actually going to get a new cheer coach and once the cheer coach arrives you can tell that their presence drives a wedge between Addie and Beth because you can tell that the cheer coach wants to take Addie under their wing and really mentor her and help her grow into the cheerleader that she knows that she can be. So like I said this does drive a wedge between Beth and Addie and they're not as close anymore but they do still have some type of friendship dynamic. But that's until the wedge between them drives deeper and deeper because there is a tragedy that takes place in this story. There is a murder and the cheer team, specifically Addie and Beth, find themselves thrusted into the police investigation surrounding this murder. And the story takes off from there. And I also forgot to mention quickly that Beth is more of the troublemaker and kind of the bad influence out of both her and Addie. Addie is very level-headed, very sweet, and really trying to, you know, just follow the rules essentially. So you can only imagine the types of toxicity that goes on in their friendship 
relationship and i'm not gonna lie to y'all when i first watched this on netflix i was hooked and i'm not the biggest sports fan but when it comes to cheerleading volleyball ice skating gymnastics and basketball from time to time i will give it a watch because i just find those sports the most interesting and appealing to me and so when i found out that there was a tv show based on the competitive world of cheerleading i knew i was going to be seated and i'm so mad that netflix canceled it after one season because it ended on a cliffhanger and it was just so cool to see everyone's friendships and dynamics evolving as the season progressed you really didn't know which direction the show was going to take and i'm assuming in turn the book as well so i actually picked up this book off of pango books because i wanted to see if i could get some closure since the show ended on season one now i'm not sure if this book is going to have any material that would have been used for season two i just kind of picked this up and hoped for the best but i'm really hoping that that is the case because like i said this was one of my favorite like guilty pleasure shows i'm just really sad that it's over and you can tell that i'm still in mourning definitely recommend checking out the series even though it is canceled i still think that it was a very strong solid first season i can only imagine how gripping the book is but when i do read this i will let you guys know my thoughts and the last ya book that i have to recommend is Cherish Farah by Bethany C. Mara. So this is definitely one of those controversial books. You either loved it or you hated it. And I know a lot of people hated this book. I'm not saying that it was 100% perfect. And I definitely had my critiques about it when I first read this book, but I still think about the story to this day. And I could definitely see what Bethany C. Mara's vision was for this story. It's just a shame that it wasn't received as well. But I still wanted to share it because at the end of the day, I'm always going to try to spotlight and highlight books written by black authors, especially black thrillers. So that's another reason why I wanted to include this book. So the story follows two best friends named Farrah and Cherish and Farrah and Cherish are I think around 17 and they've been inseparable ever since they met and Farrah used to actually be the only black girl in her township until Cherish came along. Cherish was actually adopted by a white family and so her family was really happy that she met Farrah because this was obviously a way for Cherish to connect to someone that looks like her and that has her same background and vice versa with Farrah to Cherish and so like I said they've been inseparable pretty much ever since. Unfortunately Farrah's family is having financial issues and their house is on the verge of foreclosure and and so for Farrah to remain focused in school and to not worry about this, her parents ask Cherish's family, can she stay with them for the time being? They agree and so Farrah ends up staying with Cherish's family. But as the story progresses, you start to realize that Cherish and Farrah's friendship isn't all rainbow and sunshine as you might think. And you can tell that there's something else going on beneath the surface when it comes to Cherish and her family. And the story takes off from there. I'm not going to say anything else is one of those books where you truly need to just pick up and give it a read. I really didn't know which direction Bethany C. Mara was going to go in. And I was moved by Cherish and Farrah as characters, especially Cherish. Even though she claimed that she loved Farrah, of course, as a best friend and as a sister, she would do things to Farrah that you would do to your enemy and so I was so fascinated with Cherish's character and really wanting to peel back her layers and get into her head because you could just tell that there was something off about her there was something that was not right and Farrah was still trying her hardest to ignore it ignore the red flags and continue to be friends with Cherish because they've been friends their entire lives but you realize very quickly that Cherish is just not a good person she's not a good friend and like I said the story takes a very sinister turn I will say that this is one of those thrillers that really does read like a fever dream it is very ambiguous at times so you do have to pay a little bit more attention to the story and the plot overall I still think this is one of the most haunting and experimental books on toxic female friendships especially as it relates to black girls so like i said even though this book is not for everybody even though it might not be for this person it could be for you and the last book that i have here before i move on to my honorable mentions is what lies in the woods by kate alice marshall so this was actually a book of the month pick and this was their january 2023 pick i did not read this until may and i'm actually really mad about that this is a fantastic book and i was not expecting to like this as much as i did but this story follows three best friends named olivia cassidy and naomi and similar to all of the other friendships that i've talked about in this book these girls have been inseparable ever since they were children they are literally childhood best friends they used to play in the woods together and play dress up and play you know make-believe games one of those make-believe games encouraged them to play in the woods and so one summer while they're playing this game in the woods Naomi is actually brutally attacked to the point where she is unfortunately I think stabbed 17 times by a madman in the woods and Naomi does survive this incident but she doesn't really recall the man that stabbed her or what really led up to the event although Cassidy and Olivia were there they were hiding and they were obviously children so they were very scared so they also don't really remember anything that happened that night yet the girls do find themselves speaking to the police and really trying to recount the details of this attack and these details do lead to someone getting arrested but it's obviously not the 
correct man who was arrested. And Naomi, Cassidy, and Olivia have been living with that secret ever since the attack. Fast forward years later, Olivia, Cassidy, and Naomi are all adults now. And Naomi is really just trying to move on as best as she can from the incident and really trying to heal from that trauma as best as she can. She still speaks to Olivia and Cassidy, but I don't think they speak as much since they were children, but they still do make time for each other whenever they can. They do end up reconnecting at the same time. And Olivia is pretty much fed up with keeping this secret for so long. She really wants to go to the police and come clean. And Cassidy and Naomi don't want that to happen because obviously that means that they could get in trouble for lying essentially. And so they're trying their hardest to convince Olivia to not go to the police. And Olivia is not really hearing it. She doesn't really want to hear it. But all of that proves futile anyway, because Olivia ends up going missing. And now Cassidy and Naomi have to come together to try to figure out what actually happened to Olivia and if it's related to the secret that they've been harboring all of these years. So this is one of those psychological thrillers that will really throw you off because you'll think one thing to only be shockingly mistaken. I was not expecting this book to get as dark and gritty as it did. I've never read anything by Kate Alice Marshall before but I am so excited to read more of her books because this one was addictive, it was fast paced, and it was so entertaining and I couldn't put this book down. You really realize how messed up Naomi, Cassidy, and Olivia's friendship truly is. It really reiterates the fact that even though you might have known someone since childhood that doesn't mean that they're a good person and that doesn't mean that you guys are necessarily good friends or have a healthy friendship and like I said it was so evident throughout this book and I felt so bad for Naomi in particular because she was the one that went through this harrowing attack essentially because I couldn't imagine surviving an attack like that and people just kind of dismissing it or brushing it off or really telling you to kind of move on because it happened so long ago. So yeah this book had a lot of great themes as it pertains to toxic female friendships but I feel like friendships overall but this is definitely a book that I recommend. I feel like I don't see too many people talking about this book as much and it really breaks my heart because like I said this book was so good and I just loved again how dark and gritty and just gruesome it got. I think this is a perfect book to read for the upcoming fall slash spooky season. If you are not one of those people that likes to read seasonal books in their specific season because this does mostly take place in the summertime but with how like I said dark and intense this book gets I feel like these themes are perfect to read on like a chilly October night. <laughs> okay and the last three books that I have here are all adult thrillers and I'm just going to include them as honorable mentions because I've talked about all of these books in extensive detail on my channel so if you are looking for more information on these books and if you want to hear more of my thoughts then please make sure you go check out my wrap-ups as well as my TBR videos but the reason as to why I'm recommending these books again is because there are new people that do stumble upon my channel pretty much every single day. So I really want to put these books on the radar just in case. First book that I have here is we Were Never Here by Andrea Bartz. Of course I had to include this one. I feel like this is the goat of toxic female friendships. If you are a true fan of this trope and you really like to read books that fall into this category, you need to pick up this one because this, this really explores toxic female friendships at its most extreme. Truly. The next book that I have here is an Honest Lie by Taryn Fisher. Of course I'm going to plug this book again. I know a lot of people don't like this book but I don't care and I feel like this book encapsulates so many different tropes. The friend group in here, very fake nice and of course there is a lot of backstabbing that goes on within this group. And then the last book that I have here is one of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. So I talk about this book as well as this author pretty much all of the time. So I'm not going to go into my same spiel. This is another book that I feel like explores toxic female friendships very, very well. This book leans into more Real Housewives drama. And I know that because one, I read it. But also I made a video talking about my favorite books that have Real Housewives-esque drama. So I will leave that link up above in the card somewhere just in case you haven't checked that video out. This book, again, similar to I feel like an honest lie, this encapsulates so many different tropes. So if you were looking for a book that is very explosive and very, unhinged this is the book for you. All right y'all and those are all of the books I had to share with you today. Now keep in mind that these are not all of the toxic female friendship books that I have read but I wanted to try to recommend a few different books that I haven't really talked about too much on my channel so that's why I went with these books. There's actually going to be a book that does fall into this trope that I'm going to recommend in a different video. I'm not going to say too much because it is one of those like secret videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me my channel out and lastly please make sure you follow me on bookstagram as well as storygraph. I'll leave all of that information linked down below as well as at the end of the video like I always do. I will see you guys in my next video.